Hi there, Nerd Caliber. I'm Mink the Seder, and I am going to show you how to make fabulous bat wings like mine. I have a bunch of tools that I'm going to introduce you to, and I'll tell you kind of where to get them more or less. The most important thing that you're going to need is self adhesive vinyl. This is a roll of it, which I got online, and you can get them online pretty much any craft store or I don't know, large once bookstore websites um, to buy rolls of vinyl. You can also get them in sheets, but be aware they'll come in a 12 inch by 12 inch sheet. So if you want your wings to be bigger than 12 inches by 12 inches, you might want to go for the roll. You're also going to need some vinyl tape. Uh, this is um, electrical tape. You're going to need some clear elastic. I got this at a craft store. You're going to need 12 gauge galvanized steel. Um, I did get this online because I'm lazy and don't like to go shopping, but you can get this at a hardware store when you get your electrical tape. You're gonna need something to cut that 12 gauge galvanized steel because scissors are not gonna do it. You'll also need some pliers. I have craft pliers. Um, these are probably not the ideal craft pliers for what we're using them for, but since it doesn't quite matter, craft pliers of any kind should do the trick. I also have a pair of scissors, measuring tape, permanent markers, and a pencil and paper that I have lovingly taped together so that I have a larger sheet of paper. That's because my wings aren't going to be the standard eight and a half by 11. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my paper and this handy pencil to map out what I'm doing. I'm going to draw basically a wing, a bat wing. And if it's not perfect, I'm not going to be sad because nothing in life is perfect. But more importantly, I have an eraser. I am drawing the outside shape of the wing and then I drew this little um, perpendicular line to be the bottom of my wing. We'll see if I keep it or not. Now I'm going to draw a nice little scallop. Again, this isn't perfect and you can already see I have changed my lines a few times because I don't, know, I don't love it. There we go. For bat wings or dragon wings, I usually like to put in three points before I get to the end point, because I think once I saw a picture of a bat and that's what it looked like, but you do you. Decide if you want ridges and all that kind of crazy stuff, because it's your bat wings, not mine. This is just your demonstration. Another thing I'm gonna map in while I'm here is bats, or I'm going to assume also sometimes maybe dragons, have bones in their wings that are kind of like our fingers evolutionarily. So starting on this outside edge, I'm gonna draw some vaguely curvy lines that go from the outside edge to each point on my bat wing. For the most part, they meet at that lovely corner but not always. This one, for example, is probably gonna be slightly off. So you can see it's slightly off center. That's okay. Hooray, that's a bat wing I can tolerate. So let's cut them out. Now I'm hoping that those of you who are watching this video have lots of good cutting experience because you are going to need to be vaguely precise about your cutting. Yes, you can use a, um, a craft knife to do this or a box cutter, um, and that would be perfectly fine and reasonable. Um, I like to use scissors because that's just my personal preference, so feel free to use whatever cutting method or cutting tool that you prefer. And voila, a bat wing. And we're done, just kidding. <laughs> we're just getting started. Before I begin with my bat wing, I do want to just make sure I know that this is only one half of my bat wing. I'm gonna have 
another bat wing. And I need to measure out this steel to give my bat wing some structure, basically the bones. I'll be measuring with my measuring tape along this edge, more or less, then along this edge, and then I'm gonna use a rule of thumb. This rule of thumb. This will help me figure out what support I need for the back of the wing so that when I wear it on my back, it's nice and stable. So I like to take my hands and go like this, overlapping my thumbs, because this will be generally proportionate to you and your back. I have tiny girl hands, so you know my, my back is similarly shaped, but if you have larger hands, your back and your shoulders might be larger and you might want a little bit more support. You don't have to go with this rule of thumb, I just find it's very helpful. On my own personal rule of thumb, I know that my thumb is approximately three inches by four and a half to five inches. So that means that I am going to add four and a half or five, three, and another four and a half to whatever measurement I do for my wings. Right now it sounds like I'm a lot of math, but I'm gonna show you, we'll write it down, and then we'll make it happen. So I'm starting by measuring my outside edge, and it doesn't have to be precise, but I am gonna let you know that using a um, tape measure that you would use for fabric is much, much more helpful than trying to use a ruler on a curved surface. That's just gonna, you're not gonna have a good time. So this is about 11 and a half inches. I'll write that down because I don't wanna forget it. And another seven inches. And as I said in my rule of thumb, I'm gonna be adding, I'll say five inches by three inches by five inches again. The reason I need to care about that is because I'm going to be making a continuous line of steel, which means I have a lot of steel to unwind. This part is unfortunately not very glamorous. It's just taking a buttload of steel and unwinding it. This is why I have the pliers, by the way, because as I start to unwind, you're going to see a bunch of kinks, and I'm sorry, but for the most part, you should be able to do it by hand, but there are some kinks that you might wanna break out the pliers for. My personal trick to uh, unkinking or uncurling a wire is just gently bend it in the opposite direction. I like to kind of bend as I roll out the wire because I find it's a little bit easier to control and it gives me the flatness that I'm looking for. It's not gonna be perfect, and that's okay. We don't need it to be perfect. This doesn't have to be gorgeously flat. It just needs to be good enough or as I like to say, good enough for government work. All right, right now it's starting to become unmanageably long. So I'm going to just start marking some things. For example, I know I have 11 and a half inches I need to measure. And this is where I'm really happy that I have some permanent markers. So I can mark 11 and a half with permanent marker. And then I need to mark seven with permanent marker. And then that gives us my wing. Now I need to do my rule of thumb, which would be five, three, five. So five inches, three inches, five inches. Oh snap, I'm actually doing pretty good for size here. I might have just enough already rolled out. Maybe I'll need a little bit more. My visual perception's good, but it might not be that good. All right, according to this, I need, again, I'm now flipping this almost like I'm flipping it this way. So I need this edge again, I need the seven inches. So I'm gonna measure out seven inches and then another 11 and a half inches. Ooh, I did roll out pretty much exactly what I need. 
This never happens, so I want you to enjoy this then. I'm using my steel cutter to cut through this like a hot knife through butter. Mmm, so satisfying. So now I've got this lovely piece of steel rod. More or less straight, there's some things, areas I can improve, and I'm sure I will, but again, doesn't have to be perfect. Here's where I might actually use my pliers. I like to start in the middle. So here is my middle. Here's my three inches that I measured out from before. I want to bend that to a 90 degree angle, so I'm making a box. I can bend it with my hand, sure, but the pliers might be helpful here too. And again, it doesn't need to be perfect, just good enough. Need to see where I made my mark. There it is. Look at how beautiful these bat wings are. I know, we're not done yet. And I know already that these are not perfectly lined up, which is fine. We'll just trim it later. We got time. No need to stress out about any of this. All right. Now I'm going to use this wing shape to help me figure out how I need to bend the steel to make my wing. Here's where it's really helpful that we've already bent this kind of weird letter U. If I lay this flat, I know that I need to bend it just along here. So with my pliers, I'll initiate that bend. And if I overbend, again, no big deal. So I can see that I'm going to need to put in a very mild bend right here in the middle. There we go. And that should bring us to our measured point. It does, oh, is it math fun. And again, I will bend. And here I get to bend in a couple of different places to make my wing a little bit more rounded on the outside. Oops, over bent. No big deal. If you really like what you're doing and you want it to stay really firm and hard, something that you can do is you can superheat this using um, a propane torch or um, a signaling torch and you can slowly go through and torch all around the wire to get it to be more rigid. It will make this a little bit more brittle, but it will make sure that it holds its shape. That's especially helpful if you're making larger than a coat hanger butterfly wings, but since we want to be able to bend these later into fun and exciting shapes, I would not recommend um, superheating the wire for this project. So now that I have my basic shape for the first bat wing, I'm just going to flip it, whew, magic, and do it again for the other side. We're gonna do it again, but different. Again, the trick here is to just keep at it. There is no special trick. It's just play with it until it looks more or less the way that you want it to look. Hopefully the only lesson that you're learning today is that this doesn't have to be hard or stressful. It's easy peasy. Now, if I remember correctly, this was the wing, this was the side that was actually a little bit longer. You really can't tell, and it's not gonna make or break your project, but if it is killing you that they're not perfect, you can see on the first wing, when I line it up, it's about an inch or a finger shorter, so if I need to, for symmetry, I can just clip this an inch shorter. I usually like to mark what I am going to clip though before I do so, just because I feel like it's better to err on the side of marking, what is that saying? Measure twice, cut once. Always be very careful with 
where these pieces wind up. You don't want them to wind up in your feet. So I'm gonna just keep this one in the top corner over here so I can keep an eye on it, make sure it behaves. All right, so we have our basic wing shape. This is fantastic, but we're not done. We need to get these little bones taken care of. So let's go measure it out. I see this one appears to be about nine inches. I'm gonna write that down because I know I'm gonna forget because numbers are hard. This middle one is about seven and a half inches. So I'm gonna measure that, seven and a half. And this bottom one is about seven inches. I just round to the nearest half inch because I think it's cleaner and neater that way. If you want to measure to the quarter inch or to the eighth of an inch, you know, have fun with fractions. It's, it's, that's your prerogative, not mine. All right. I'm going to, yet again, kind of pre-bend these out. Every time I cut one of these bones, I need to make sure that I cut two of them because we have two wings. So it's not just one nine inch bone, it's two or seven and a half or seven. You get the idea. All right. So first one is nine inches long. I'm gonna measure that one out. And for kicks, I'll just measure out the other one too. So I'll get my nines done. As you know, I'm pre-marking and then I'm gonna cut them up. It is so much easier to cut longer lengths of wire than it is to cut shorter lengths of wire, especially that tiny one inch piece of wire that we cut just a minute ago. Ping, satisfying. Now, for those of you who are wondering um, what is gonna happen with the uh, raw edge of the steel now that I have cut it because the galvanized edge keeps it from rusting but oh my gosh now we have a raw edge <gasps> is it going to rust we'll be encasing this in vinyl so you don't have to worry about it rusting when it is encased fully in the vinyl just obviously make sure that when you are vinyling it don't put this in water and then put it in your vinyl don't introduce water when you don't need to I'm gonna bend these now because I can and because it's one of my favorite parts, so I'm gonna do it now. Notice I'm doing it by hand, but I totally have the pliers next to me as like my, if you screw up, Mink, the pliers are here to help. <laughs> I did that once when I was a kid. The first time I was left alone in my house, I accidentally caused a fire in my toaster oven and my response was to get the fire extinguisher, a good response, and put it next to the toaster oven. That'll learn it. The fire did go up and my parents did not find out. Surprise. So I can, in theory, flip over this pattern and do the same shaping of this bone on the other side, but I didn't draw it, oh no. Well, here's the best part about the fact that this wire is flat. We, we, we can just make two of them. And then what we'll do is we'll just flip it. And now we have the second wing bone. So no big deal, easy to do. You can see thumb action's really important for this. Uh, that's where I get the majority of my power. All right, so we've got that first bone down. And you can see more or less on my wings where that's going to sit. I don't need to worry about soldering it or taping it or anything like that because when we get the vinyl down, that's gonna do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. So let's get the other two bones done. These ones I don't need to roll out as much of the metal wire because they're only seven and a half and seven inches. Two, 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 two. 
this is the part where it is helpful to play instrumental music in the background because God help you if you put on music that has words while you're doing anything involving numbers because I tend to accidentally forget my numbers. Again, why I write it down. All right, got my seven and a halfs pre-measured. Ping. Ping. And time to make the shape. Ba -da -da -da. Oh, over curved it. Oh no, I'll just unbend it. And more or less perfect. Good enough. Let's do it again, but different. Beautiful. <laughs> right now I don't care what I'm doing with this. That's it's totally fine. I will deal with it later. This is future our problem. All right, one more. This one's the seven inch. Which means technically I'm rolling out 14 inches of this wire because math tells me that seven plus seven is 14. All right, got that measured. Ping. And ping. I'm not fully done with this wire. I'm gonna keep it out, but that's only because later I'm gonna make a crossbar to just extra give this balance and support. So I'll keep that out until I'm ready for my crossbar. This one really doesn't need any curving. I mean, eh. There, now I put a curve in it. Just don't it doesn't sit right with me that I didn't draw a curve. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Just do a really, really subtle curve. Oh, it's too unsubtle. Apparently I just drew a straight line for this last little wing bone. Well, I guess that makes our job easier. Fantabulous. All right, so now we have, more or less we have our wings. Um, I can sit here and try to pose the bone, the wing bone, like so, just so I can kind of get an idea of where things go and at what angle. But for the most part, you can see it lines up. Hooray! Now we get to do the fun part, and that's the vinyl part. I'm gonna move a pile over here. I'm gonna move a pile over here because when we put down the vinyl, we actually don't want these in the party yet. We are going to do one wing at a time using a strip of vinyl. We'll lay down the finger bones and then we'll put down another layer of vinyl and cut it all up to form. So that's gonna be our plan, that's our procedure. And you guys get to watch me embarrass myself as I attempt and fail on numerous times to peel off the adhesive backing. So that's just something to look forward to. Now, what I'm about to do is cut way more vinyl than I have any business using because this roll happens to be like 10 feet of vinyl, so it's always good to have extra. But I do want extra for this. If I were to cut exactly this shape and put it down, put down the finger bones and cut exactly the shape and then try to line it up with itself, that's just asking for trouble. So we're gonna do all that cutting after the fact. Regular scissors will do to cut vinyl, as you can see. Do not use fabric scissors. You will ruin your fabric scissors. And any other person who uses fabric scissors in your household will be sad. As I mentioned, 
I am not the best at peeling off the backing. Look at that beautiful backing. All right. I don't know if the mics are sensitive to, enough to pick up that static sound, but that static is your best friend. Yeah. I really like the static because that is going to help it just kind of lay flat. One time I did this on a carpet. Do not recommend doing this on a carpet. Do this on a flat surface. You will thank me later. Eh. <laughs> Perfect. Now the greatest part about the fact that it is self-adhesive is that already it's just sticking to the steel. Fabulous. I could sit here and just put this down. I don't want to. I just want this to more or less show me where I need to put my bones. So I'm gonna put this bone down about here. And I'm just gonna line it up and put it down. Hooray. My next bone is going to go about here. And my last one, oh, I found a hair. Gross. <laughs> it was mine. The next bone is going to go about here. Brilliant. And you can see I have my little gap here. Again, for no other reason than arbitrary fun. So now I'm going to roll out and cut another piece of vinyl, roughly the same abstractly large shape because we have extra vinyl. I need to get myself room. This is going to go up here. Stay. Good. All right. I learned this technique from temporary tattoos which doesn't make sense, but that's how I learned it, is I learned what I'm about to show you from making temporary tattoos. I got it. Gosh, I hope I don't mess it up and lose it again. All right, what I learned from making temporary tattoos is that the best way to put an adhesive thingy onto another adhesive thingy is to peel about an inch of the adhesive thingy. And I'm gonna line that inch with roughly the edge of my other vinyl piece. And now, hey, I didn't say you could stick. It don't stick. I will fix this. This feels weird. Okay. And now that my skin cells are a part of that, gross. I'm going to hold down this inch edge and I'm going to slowly pull the backing. And so what you will find is that I'm going to get a pretty precise roll. This is where you at home ooh and ah at how amazing I am. <laughs> and then I'm just going to take my fingertips and press, press, press. And as I'm sure you're starting to notice, there's a bat wing forming. Look at how rad that is. If you see, I do have an air bubble. Those are almost unavoidable when you are doing this process. Don't worry. You can get a pin and you can just pop that right out. Um, the sharper and tinier the pin, the better. So if you have like a really sharp, really fine sewing needle, use that. Um, if you're worried, oh no, I can see the hole. Um, all vinyl is vaguely heat reactive, so you can get um, an iron on a low setting and just kind of mm, give it a quick iron and that might be able to get rid of that little hole. As you can see, I'm also doing some pinching on the other side of the vinyl too because I want to make sure that my finger bones are very clearly defined. If you have fingernails, use them. If you don't have fingernails, a butter knife goes a long way. I just take a butter knife or even the edge of a scissor and just rub it 
using the flat edge of the scissor. I don't want to po poke any holes. I just want to use it for its edging capability. And you can see we have some air bubbles on the other side. Again, I can just punch, pop them, not a big deal. If I did like a terrible, terrible job, um, I can start again by pulling it up or, you know, I can just be happy with it. It's really, it's not a big deal. Um, I'm gonna show you cutting this out now so that we can fast forward through doing the other side and then we'll get to finishing this off. So I am going to actually, I wanna trace this out. I'm gonna use a marker. And now you can see I kind of missed on some of my points because I was doing this by eye, which is fine. I'll just trace a little bit wider than where I want to be because I'm gonna cut uh, past this line. So it's almost like I'm giving myself a seam allowance for cutting. This part's the easy part. Cutting this is gonna be fun. I move around when I cut. I'm very useless when it comes to cutting in a single uh, space. So I'll, I'll let this thing be flat, but I'm just like, woo. So I do apologize if I'm moving around too much for your sensibilities. So I'm more or less, ooh, I do still see some marker, so I'm gonna cut along that too. I do like using darker permanent markers because you can still see them against the vinyl, but even if you do leave a little bit of the permanent marker there by accident, it's, uh, it's not too visible. So now I'm trying. gonna try to cut as close as I can to the wire on the outside edge. I know that there will be a lip and we will take care of that lip using our electrical tape. Don't worry if your cuts are not super close. As you can see, some of my cuts are closer, some of my cuts are not super close. You can always go back and try to cut more. And as I mentioned before, I am going to clean up this edge using um, some electrical tape. Cutting on the edge is always hard. If you want to use a craft knife here, you can but do be aware that you are cutting pretty near steel, so just try not to cut the steel. I don't want you to damage um, a nice craft knife, but it's, if it's a box cutter, you know, go crazy. All right, so now I have a wing starting to take shape. Oh, look how pretty, it's so cute. I'm gonna show you how to clean up this edge, and then I will quickly make the other wing so that we can start playing with it, finishing it off, and mounting it onto your back. I'm gonna use vinyl tape. Uh, this is, as I mentioned, this is vinyl electrical tape. I have them in two colors. If you want them to be uniform, get it in the color that you have made your vinyl wing. If you want it to be a fun contrast, get it in a different color. I'm not your dad, I can't tell you what to do. I will say that this is one of my favorite parts because Electrical tape has a little bit of give to it, a little stretch, and I take advantage of that when I'm doing this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up basically so that I am hitting the middle of my, um, my edge here. I'm not pushing anything except for the middle down. If you want, you can do this in multiple tape pieces. I like to do it in one tape piece because I think it looks more finished that way. And as you can see, I'm only rolling out a little bit at a time 
because that's going to help me get some tension and the tension is going to help make both a really tight seal and help me on these curves. For those of you who sew, this is like bias tape, sticky bias tape. And I will cut this a little bit longer than the wire itself. You can see it already wants to just fold down on itself, which is perfect, because that's what we're gonna do. I will take my thumbs and forefingers, and I will pinch the edges down to the vinyl to secure it. If I don't like it, I can pull it up again and stretch it to even out any bubbles or stretch marks I don't like. This is very forgiving. And once it's down, it will stay pretty well because it is electrical tape. And because it is electrical tape, that means that uh, you don't have to worry about it coming up unless you want it to come up. That is the nature of electrical tape. Here's my little extra edge. I'll cut that in a little bit. Oh, this started to come off, that's okay. No harm, no foul because I didn't secure it. So I'm gonna line it up more or less in the middle and pinch. Lots of pinching involved in this project. The day I discovered that this could be used was a good day. Now, as I get to this little bend, if I want, I can cut any extra that from the fold before I pinch it down. So I'll show you what that looks like. I'm just gonna smooth out a stretch line I don't like. By just pulling it up and smoothing it down a little differently. So I'm going to just cut a little, little triangle out not very big. Let's see if I can even show you how little this triangle is. Very little, very, very little. You can hang out over there. And I can fold it to try to get it to meet. I think I cut a little too much, which is fine because I can just use a little bit more electrical tape. <clears throat> Again, there's, a, there's no such thing as like an unsolvable problem, an unforgiving mistake, there's no such thing. There. Now I just wanna clip this. I saved this edge so that I can just follow the line that I'd used previously to cut to make a nice edge. And that looked lovely. We will be shaping it so it doesn't look super boring and flat, but I wanna make my other wing before I shape these wings because I do like to shape my wings at the same time so that we're roughly symmetrical. So let's get started on that. All right, so now that I've got my wings, 
I'm going to make a support bar that's gonna go right here. That's gonna make it so that these wings don't start to do this over time. I really want that support bar. My support bar is going to be roughly as long as my square itself, which if you recall, my rule of thumb, it was about three. I'm gonna to cut to three and a half because I can and because it never hurt to have a little bit extra for a support bar, but only like a little bit extra, don't go crazy. I'm officially done with my steel now. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay my support bar right here and I will use my electrical tape to secure that in place. This time I am going to use the color match electrical tape because I think it looks cleaner to have it in black but if you want it to be in red, you do you. I'm going to make ultimately an X. I'll start by kind of wrapping a little bit here, a little bit here. So this is my first part of the X. It doesn't have to be super tight right now. It will be tighter later. So let's see, I did this before. So you can see ultimately what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use the electrical tape to secure two perpendicular wires to one another, which is not easy. As I mentioned, it's gonna come out a little bit bulky, but I will use the electrical tape further to fix that. Tighten it up and make it look really sleek. First part of my X. Now there's no real reason why I make it as a letter X. That's just something that I do to help me. You can do this as one single piece of tape. That's fine. Whatever you need to do to get it to lay secure. So now I have this more or less positioned so that it is the loop that I want. Starting from this corner, I'm gonna wrap my electrical tape around my crossbar, down my U, all the way up again, and then finish, probably I'll finish right about the middle point of my crossbar again. That's going to really make this a solid piece of wire again. And because I'm doing it in that way, I'm going to want to pull the electrical tape as tight as I can. Here's where I was saying, you don't have to worry about the taping, your initial tape down being super tight, because when you go and wrap, which you can see I'm doing at a slight angle, you wind up getting out any of those air pockets that you had from before. Some people find this easier to do with a length of tape. Feel free to wrap in whatever methodology works the best for you. I'm gonna really make sure I wrap around that area where my wires meet. Now, the added benefit is somewhat cosmetic because now we are going to make my galvanized steel a uniform color. It's gonna be black. And if you're fancier at your wrapping than I am, it might actually look cool too. I love how my tape is exactly as wide as my hole here, so I have to keep pulling it at a weird angle 
just to get it to go through. That's because I bought new tape for this demonstration. If I was using the tape I had at home, it would go through no problem because I use electrical tape like it is going out of season. So I'm about halfway, feeling strong. We'll be using this method to put the strapping on to finish this little sucker off. This also is going to help lock down that edging that we have that was extra from our vinyl. So this step really does have a lot of function and use, so I would not recommend skipping it. This is also a great way to make your frame if you are making butterfly wings or feathered wings of any kind. This is just a really helpful way of securing wiring to itself. I would not recommend doing this with thicker materials such as PVC simply because there's only so much weight that the electrical tape can handle before you're going to inevitably get sag that will affect how the pieces hold together. And you want their shape to be pretty rigid. So I made it back to the corner, but now I am going to continue wrapping because I just really want that join to be locked in. Here's where I can pull a bunch, cut, and wrap with the excess. Again, I love that final electrical tape because it does have some stretch to it and you can use that stretch to your advantage. All right, so that crossbar is not going anywhere and these wings are not gonna be able to be any further apart than this distance. If you want the wings to be further apart, by all means, make this crossbar longer so that you wind up getting more of a trapezoid shape. I like this distance. As I said, it's my rule of thumb. So that is why I do it the way I do. So now we're at the exciting part, the part where we get to shape our wings and make them have any sort of life, because right now, this is pretty boring. Feel free to have them this way, but it's pretty boring. I'm going to bend them back first just a little bit. And like I said, it's helpful to have both wings made and finished so that when you're doing this, you can do it vaguely symmetrically. So I usually start by bending a light curve so they curve in, so I'm almost like making a circle. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend this edge back out again. We can do this now because we had been mostly working with our wire as a very flat two-dimensional surface, but now we're gonna make it sort of three-dimensional. Now I can stop here, this is pretty cute. I can also put a three-dimensional bend in these finger bones as well though, and that might be cute and cool. This part is a little bit of a challenge because at this point it's really hard to grip these with um, pliers because they are fully encased in the vinyl. So I'll just do a very light bend to get the idea. Obviously, as you work with it, you are gonna need to start moving the vinyl along just a little bit so that you can smooth it out, give it the look that you want. But we more or less have a cute little set of bat or dragon wings almost ready to put on. We just need something to attach it with. You can attach ribbons over by the crossbar. You can attach elastic. I like to use clear elastic because with the wings that I'm wearing on right now, 
I have clear elastic. It is very difficult to tell that I have clear elastic on. If I was wearing uh, a shirt that didn't have sleeves, it might be a little easier to tell just because you'd be able to see on my skin where it pulls. But when you're wearing something fabric based, it's very difficult to notice. So more or less knowing what your arm eye, that's the um, hole in your t-shirt that your arm would go through, knowing what that is can be very helpful here. I'm just gonna take some of my tape measure and make a circle. And my arm eye is about 18 inches, which I've done enough of these, I do know that. Um, so I'm gonna measure out probably 19 inches just to be safe. Again, you can get a clear elastic banding at any craft stores or fabric stores, but they might sell them as like clear bra straps. If you wanna roll, you might have to order that online. To make it the same size, shape and length, I'm just going to take this and use it as my measuring stick. Now, I'm feeling particularly lazy, so instead of getting my sewing machine and back stitching and front stitching, this loop together, I am just going to tie a knot. I'm feeling knotty. So I just had a knot to make my loop. It's so simple. Now I'm comfortable with this being the size of my arm eye because when I lock this down in place, um, it will have enough stretch to make it around my arm. Um, and also orient nicely on my back. Time to do again, but different. All right. So now I have two loopies. They both have a knot on the end, which is great. I am going to be putting them on my back piece here, my backboard. And I will use the vinyl tape to wrap around this main part of my harness. And I'm going to hide my knot in there as well. I'll probably tape from about the top to just about the midpoint here. This one I can use a longer length for because passing this through is a pain in the butt. I like to start with just a little bit of excess. There we go. So that when I do my wrap, hey, and say you can come to the party, get out of here. When I do my wrap, I can kind of control this better. I'm not going to tell you that this is easy with two hands because as you can see I'm kind of using my back of my hand to hold the loop open. This is if you have three hands this is where you are at an advantage over the rest of us so good for you. Um, if you are human like myself and only have two sets of hands make use of things that you have like the back of your hand to try to keep the loop from folding over on itself. So I'm going to start pulling hard on my tape to make use of that compression quality that it has as I fold the tape back up and over itself. Make a nice locked in loop. I'm going to do it again on the other side and then we'll be done. Drink. Yet again. I wanna make sure my loop is nice and straight though. I hate getting kinks in my loops because it just feels weird. So 
always getting that first tape piece down. That's such a pain in the butt. I'm worried I might not have caught up a long enough strip, which is fine, because I can just make another strip of electrical tape. Now, don't worry about this part being beautiful because this is the part that's going to be on your back. So if it's not beautiful, not a whole lot of folks are gonna see it, especially the part where the straps connect to the frame. Because the reality is no one's gonna see that part. That part's gonna be flush against your back. So don't worry about it. As you can see, I didn't quite have enough to make my tape double back on itself, so I just cut another piece of tape. It's no biggie. No biggie. All right, so I now have some strappies, and we now have a glorious set of bat wings. I know, should we try it on? Let's take off the old wings. Try on the new wings. Trying on a pair of wings by yourself is always fun because they are rather close to each other. I have not worked out the elastic yet. There we go. There we go, and I can play with these a little bit, make sure that they're the way that I want them to sit. And now I have a new pair of dragon wings. Aren't they cute? And I hope you had a lot of fun watching this and making your own. Um, if you like what you see here, please make sure that you continue to follow Nerd Caliber and all their pursuits. If you want to see what I do, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and even Twitch. Everything I have is under Mink the Seder. So come check me out sometime. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was informative. I hope it was fun and have a great day. Okay, bye.